Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we've got a puncture-proof inner tube, aero kit for fast riders, a bike light tracker combo, shiny tubeless valves, and a new bike for Boris Johnson. And we're going to discuss what is the optimum price to pay for a bike. Which price point represents the best bang for your buck? We begin with our poll results from last week, uh, in which we asked you, is the UCI right to ban continuous glucose monitor sensors being used in races? And uh, well, it was quite clear cut, it wasn't was, it? Yeah. Overwhelmingly, 65% of you said no. By this precedent, um, it's a slippery slope and all sensors should be banned. And uh, just 35% of you said yes, I don't want tech taking over the sport. Well, I um, thought it'd be closer than that. Hmm. Yeah, it seems people um, welcome the, the tech, which I don't think, well, I think I think it's good. I agree. I think hmm. it's all good. But this week we're discussing what is the optimum amount of money to spend on an entry level bike. So which gives you the biggest bang for your buck? So the other day I was reading an article on a posh newspaper. What the Independent? Um, well, the online version anyway. But the article I saw was saying about what is the optimum amount of money to spend on a bottle of wine. So what gives you sort of best wine? without breaking the bank and it's something that everyone can kind of afford. And it turns out, £10 is that amount. Okay, well aside from the fact that I'm amazed that you described the independent as posh, yes. what is, well how does that work? Why is £10 um, the optimum amount? So you've obviously got some fixed costs included with your bottle of wine, so things like the tax, the glass bottle itself, packaging, transport, marketing, and then after all of those costs is the amount that's left to go on to the actual wine. So if the example that was given in this article was £5, so if you spent five pounds on your bottle of wine, all that's left is 49 pence to go onto your wine. So out of your five pounds, there's only actually a small proportion of it that's going onto your wine. Whereas, if you spent 10 pounds on your bottle of wine, you're effectively spending more money going on the quality of the wine itself. So if you're spending twice the amount of money over your five pound bottle, you're getting six times the amount of money spent on the wine. The actual wine itself? Yeah. Right, hmm. so I guess we can apply this to bikes. We can apply this to bikes, and it'd be interesting to see what like our fixed costs are and how much money is left to be spent onto the quality of the bike. Hmm. So I guess the, the thing to point out is that uh, you can increase the amount of money spent on a bottle of wine. So you could have a thousand pound <laughs> yeah. bottle of wine. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they exist. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Not in probably in Hank's wine cellar. Yes, but a thousand pound bottle of wine. It, it although. It might be better than yeah. a ten pound bottle of wine. The, the sort of it's not proportionally better. No. So it no. might be just a bit better. It's like diminishing returns the more you yes. spend. It's it? not a thousand times better. <laughs> like, <laughs> in terms of our bikes, though, like how cheap is too cheap? Because I saw this and wondered what it was going to be like. Yes, yeah, so this is a, a bike from Halfords. It's very entry level. This bike is just one hundred and thirty five pounds. So very sort of competitively priced at an entry-level market, but we can make some assumptions about the cost of the bike. First up in the UK, um, there's value-added tax added onto a purchase like this. Similar tax is applied to in other countries as well. Um, that'd be 20% here, which is 27 pounds. Yep. Then you've got the retailer markup. Again, this will vary, but we can make an assumption of it being around sort of 25%. So they're um, just some of our first uh, sort of fixed costs though, aren't they? Mm. So out of our original 135 pound bike, we're down to about 81 pounds now taken into those, but we haven't taken into consideration lots of the other aspects. So we've got things like the packaging, the transport, the marketing, um, and even the manufacturer, they've got to make a profit as well. So if we take into account a lot of those additional costs, we're probably close to having a value of about £50 from our original £135. And I guess that's kind of reflected in the quality of some of the components and just the sort of, even the weight of it even as well. Yeah, a bike at this price is going to be well, noticeably heavy as yeah. soon as you, you as soon as you pick it up. But the key thing for me is is the quality of these sort of low end components. While they do work, um, they don't work noticeably anywhere no. near as well as, as slightly more expensive ones. And also, in our well, considerable experience yeah. in riding lots of different bikes for many years these components don't tend to last anywhere near as long as ones that are a little bit more expensive. So you're going to be replacing them sooner than the other yeah, ones. Yeah, it's right? that kind of adage of you buy cheap, you buy twice. Yeah. So for someone looking to buy their first bike or get the best bang for their buck, 
how much they need to spend to get that sort of good quality without having to spend thousands and thousands of pounds, euros or dollars. Yeah, well, a key thing to point out first is the business model of the bike brand can vary and that can have a quite a significant impact yeah. on it. So direct sales model companies mm. such as, well, Decathlon, uh, Ribble um, or Bayer do it and, and Canyon do it as well. They cut out a large amount of the cost in terms of distribution cost and you know retailer cost and that saving can be passed on to the customer. So that can represent a sort of bigger bang for your buck. So there. straight off the bat, what I'm going to say is around £750 up to around £1,500. I think that's a good sort of marker point. I know it's quite a wide price range, yeah. isn't it? But I think you start to get into the realms of some really good quality bikes for your I'd money agree. there. Yeah. I'd agree. So if we take your sort of £750 to £1,500 price point yeah. and go just below that to kind of justify it, show you what you can get, this bike from Decathlon would be a, a really good example. It's under £500 and represents a considerable step up in performance and quality of components over the really basic bike we showed first. Um, it would be a much better purchase if your, your budget allowed for it. Yeah, I mean, this has got like a micro shift group set and gears on it, which is fine, but it isn't quite as good as even the entry level Shimano stuff. So like a Sora, for example, it's a bit heavier. The reliability is maybe not quite so good, but there's nothing actually wrong with it. But it just highlights that if you do spend that little bit of extra money, like we're sort of saying 750 pounds up to our 1500 pound marker, you can get a bike that's considerably better in quality, can't you? Yes, the, the components are going to yeah. go up a considerable level, just going yeah. that little bit more. So we can above increase this. it further from our £500 example. There's still better quality and sort of bang for your buck to come. Yeah. Mm. What this is, sticking with your wine analogy, is it's kind of like <laughs> that two quid bottle of wine. We've yeah. now gone up to kind of like a six quid bottle of wine. Yeah. And a six quid bottle of wine can be really enjoyable. Yeah. And re really good. But we want to spend a little bit more because we think we can get quite a bit of improvement in terms of performance and quality. Yes. Mm. So moving into that 750, 1500 pound price point, you're starting to look at a bike that's going to have a really good quality sort of aluminium frame and uh, on some cases carbon frames yeah. too. But I would argue that for 90% of road cyclists, like a, a really good aluminium frame yeah. is kind of all you need. You know, a, a top end carbon frame, like something that, you know, the, the top guys at the Tour de France yeah. would ride, that can cost thousands e and thousands. Well, easily four times <laughs> yeah. as much as a good aluminium frame, but yeah. It's not going to be what we're four about. times better, yes. is it? It's not four times lighter, no. <laughs> and it's not it's not going to make you four times faster. Yeah, um, which is stiffer. To, it is lighter, our, like, but yeah, diminishing returns, aren't you? Yes. It's always going to get better, but in terms of proportionately, not in the same way as the cost. And the same can be said for group sets. Yeah. Shimano Jura Ace, the top top end top tier group set, it's amazing. Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, is yeah. it is phenomenally good, but. And it is better than Ultegra. It's yeah, lighter than yeah. Ultegra, which is the tier below. But, you know, we've tried them back yeah, to back. Wow. The shifting quality is pretty much the same. Well, even when you go to 105, for example, group set of people, you're getting that really good price point, and that's why it earned its title of group set of people, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Dura Ace does not shift two times better than Ultegra, and it is not half, half the weight. weight. Yeah. It is lighter. Yeah, but carbon bikes feel amazing though, don't they? Yeah. And if you take the logic of, well, if you can ride a Grand Fonda on it, then it'll be fine. That's, that's all right. But if you're going to be racing at a higher level, for example, then you probably are going to want to consider a carbon fiber, lightweight, aerodynamic bike. Because when you're racing, that could be the difference. And it could be the difference between winning or losing. Yes. Yeah, no, I know. I see what you're saying. There. Yeah. And, but it's, it's a bit like, you know, myself and, uh, and, and you, we're, when it comes to wine, we're Philistines. Yes. So the difference between a kind of 10 pound bottle of wine and a sort of 500 pound bottle of wine, oh. we're not really going to be able to appreciate We're not going to tell the difference. We're not sommeliers. No. Um, but it's that thing of, yeah, I think for, for most cyclists, again, that, that, that price, that 750, 1500, yeah. represents that kind of sweet spot. Yeah. And, you know, and it's for that price, you can expect to get a really good quality frame, most likely carbon. aluminium. Could be carbon or aluminium. Could be carbon, price. yeah. 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 Um, a carbon fork as well, you should expect. Yeah. And then, I, 
it, I think we're agreed on this, the sweet yeah. spot is 105, the, yeah. the optimum group set for price and performance. But the weight differences of a sort of real top-end carbon frame and a mid-range one can sometimes only be around 300 grams, can't they? Yeah, which yeah. isn't much at all. And if you actually do some maths on this, um, and you say put that into um, you know, a calculator and look at what that means on a climb, that 300 gram difference on a 10 kilometer alpine climb with an yeah. average gradient of, of 6% is worth around two watts difference. It's not that much, no, is it? No, as cyclists, yeah. we do place far yeah. too much emphasis in our, yeah. in our minds on weight. If you then start to look at you know, what the total uh, system mass difference yeah. would be. So obviously it's not just a frame weight, it's a really expensive bike. Um, all, the know, yeah, all the components. Yeah, all the components combined. You start to look at say how much difference a kilo to a, a kilo and a half of added weight can be, which is typically the difference between a bike that costs 1,500 pounds yeah. and a bike that costs 500 pounds, it's probably a kilo, kilo and a yeah. half. Then on that same 10 kilometer climb, you're looking uh, a time difference of around 30 seconds slower. So that is really on that best bang for your buck point, isn't it? Mm. Because you're getting a big in improvement in time there. Yeah, mm. but you know, for relative to what you've spent. Yeah. So like we say, the weight and the climbing ability of a bike may or may not be important to you, but what we can all agree on is that 105 is definitely the group set of people. Oh, do you know what? Yeah, we should get that made into a t-shirt. You've already got t-shirts. Add it to the list. Yeah, add, add it, it to, to the, the list. list. Yeah, we've got resistance. Resistance is beautiful. And um, what was the other one? Group set of people. Oh yeah, mm. right. Anyway, uh, we're going to have a poll. We would like to know what you think is the optimum price to spend on a bike, um, or a new bike. Uh, is it you know, around 500 pounds, euros or dollars, 1,000 pounds, euros or dollars, 2,000 pounds, euros or dollars, or sort of sky's the limit, 4,000 plus. Go on, head over to the GCN app or click on the link down below to vote. It's now time for hot tech, and first up this week, Map Clothing have launched a new range which uses all the offcuts from their existing range to create new and exciting jerseys, shorts, whatever else they want to sell. So they're going to use the leftover material to create a funky new jersey, which is kind of a bit of like a patchwork quilt idea, really. All right. Yeah. It's nice for the environment. <laughs> it is good for the environment, so it's a more sustainable clothing range. And maps say they took their inspiration from this, from 1980s shoe salesmen who would go round with one shoe, which was made of loads of different materials and loads of different colours. So that's what's inspired them. Well, sticking with cycling clothing, a new company called Go Faster has launched a range of cycling clothing on Kickstarter that you're only allowed to buy if you can prove you're fast enough. Yeah, so you have to upload a ride onto Strava to unlock the different levels of jerseys that they were planning on making. So the first level, I think, was about 26 kilometers an hour you had to upload a Yeah, it has to be a, a ride of a minimum of 10 kilometers. Yeah, so then you've got level one jersey and then they were proposing the level two jersey, which had an average speed requirement, I think it was like 39 kilometers an hour, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, it's quite fast for your average rider, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And the, well, the, the result of this was, well, I mean, we can see it's quite a novel idea. Yeah. They're trying to encourage they got people a bit of to, stick for it though, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they try to encourage people to try and better themselves and, and get fitter and faster. But yes, they've, they've, there's been yeah. a bit of a backlash. Yeah, so since then they've pulled the campaign off of Kickstarter and say they're going to reassess their business model. Mm. Mm. I, I think that's quite cool. Well, I think that's wise because they, yeah. I mean, they're limiting their potential market considerably yeah. by saying you have to be able to ride. Yeah. Where does it end? Well, I guess yeah, that's a very valid point. We wouldn't be able to buy those those second jerseys. I'd be stuck on level zero. Oh, God. Yeah. Next up, we've got the Vodafone Curve Bike Light Tracker. So yes. this is an anti-theft device, but it's also a smart rear light. So it's got all of your usual features you'd expect from a rear light. So it's rechargeable, it's got three different modes, 40 lumens of output, but then in addition to that, the part that is attached to the bike, so the brackets of area, is what houses the tracker and the GPS part of it. So you can actually remove part of the rear light to put it into tracking mode. So if you were to leave your bike outside a cafe, for example, it then can act as a security device because mm. if your bike moves, you'll get an alert on your phone and then also it'll sound a really loud siren. Yeah, 107 decibel. Oh, it's loud, isn't it? Loud thing. Um, it also has a, so it has a little SIM card slot in, and that's yes. how the sort of tracking works with the Vodafone network yeah. coverage. And you do have to pay, I think, three pounds a month. Yeah, to, to keep that, that, that aspect active, I think you need to have that. So because it's GPS enabled, it will also actually record some of your ride metrics 
So when you ride around, it'll record your location, where you've been, sort of distance speed, some basic stuff. You know, mm. can't really com you know, pair this up to a power meter, for example. Yeah, mm. uh, well, um, anti-theft devices are always welcome on our watch. Yes. We have some seriously exciting hot tech. Now, we were filming yesterday, yes. and while we were filming, I noticed a detail on Alex's bike. He had some fancy valves installed. Tell us more. These are the Muckoff V2 valves, which, as you can probably imagine, stands for version two. So the, these are upgraded, so they're lighter than the previous one. So these are made from 7075 aluminium, as opposed to 6061, which the old ones were for. So they're lighter, they come in 10 super cool colors. I've got the oil slick ones. I know, I'm glad you noticed those, actually. Um, and the big addition to these is that the inside edge of the valve has got little slots machined into it so that it can work with like a tire liner, for example, like those Vittoria run flats. Um, so it's pretty cool, yeah. Come with like nice little metal valve caps. Help remove the valve core, so they're just quite cool little accessories. It's all about for the bike. details, mm. isn't it? It's all yeah. about the details. It is. Up next, we've got a brand new Honda GX motor. So this is the GXE. Do you know what that is? No. Um, okay, lots of people might not know. So the Honda GX motor is a small petrol engine, which is used in lots of sort of small machinery like portable tools, generators, and things like that. Dirty bikes. Uh, potentially, yeah, it's that sort of size of motor. But what's cool is that Honda are now making an electric version of this. So. I know it's not designed for our bikes, for example, but what it does show is a huge company like Honda are investing into small portable motors and batteries, which means in the future, maybe we could see Honda e-bikes. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's good that this sort of, you know, a company with their standing and their yeah. experience and their engineering knowledge is pushing small electronic motors. Yeah, I mean, these things are quite small, so this, this sort of size, and they're like 2,000 watts of power. 2,000 watts. Imagine that on your bike. <laughs> Next up, President Joe Biden has gifted Prime Minister Boris Johnson a bike. Custom and, and bike. A, a custom bike and a custom painted helmet. That is cool, well, isn't it? That's a nice gift. This was at the G7 Summit, which is currently taking place down in Cornwall. Um, and the bike, well, I've got a, a, a picture of it here. Oh. It's been made by a small uh, American firm. It's, it's got a Union flag painted on the, on the down tube. And, a United States flag on the on the top tube. Nice Brooks saddle on yeah. there. Rim brake as well. It's rim brake. But, but, well, well yeah. it, it's rim brake, but they're cantilever brakes. Cantilever rim brakes. Retro. Yeah. Uh, it's also got SRAM um, ETAP one by on there. Bit disappointed to see in the photo, it's biggy big. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, it's, but it's, it's a sort of, it's a hybrid affair. It's not bike ball worthy, is Boris. it? Apparently he likes it. He's already been seen riding it, mm. um, which I'm not surprised by. It's a, it's a very nice bike. I think we should, uh, do a hot or not? Oh, Bo yeah. Boris Johnson's <laughs> new bike from Joe Biden. Is it hot or is it not? Um, yeah. I mean, I like it. I think it's cool. I think that's a, a cool bike. Nice. Final bit of hot tech this week is a brand new puncture proof inner tube from Tubalito. I know I promised this at the start of the show. So let's tell you a little bit more about it. So they say it's impossible to puncture this inner tube, and they're so confident so that they're going to offer users a one year warranty against punctures. Mm. Hmm. One year warranty, so yeah, but it costs how much? Um, 29 dollars 29 yes. So, I guess it's up to you whether you decide you want puncture proof inner tubes and pay quite a lot for them, or you just for the for less money buy five, yeah, but inner if tube, it's, normal inner tubes, yeah. But if it's really cold outside, you don't want the inconvenience of a puncture, do you? Well, one inner tube is better for the environment, yeah, lots of lots of rubber and also recycling. these are even though they're puncture proof, so they're presumably a bit thicker than some of the lightweight inner tubes, they are still reasonably reasonably lightweight. Of course. So they're 130 grams, they come in pressed up, Schrader valves, lots of different widths. I think it's 30 mil up to about 50 mil. These are mm. um, all you have to do is just register your inner tube at least one month after you bought it. No, within one month, sorry, not at least. Um, and then they'll offer you a warranty for you. Well, I guess if you don't like tubeless, this could be a solution for you. Oh, I love tubeless. Yeah, More I hot tech next week. <laughs> we know. Yeah. Time now for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit upgrades that you've made to your bikes, equipment, or cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize, GCN water bottle, or bidon, if you're French. Um, and we're going to begin with last week's upgrades. You submit your upgrades using the GCN app. Yes, um, so last, week, last week. Last week had Pete Warburton's Retro Rally Grand Sports up against BNY underscore Cycles Retro Modern Batain Beauty. 
It was close. It was close. Very close. 49% went to the Batane Beauty, which means the winner is Pete Warburton's Retro Rally Grand Sport. Get in touch over on Facebook and uh, we'll arrange the water bottle to be sent out to you. Yeah, mm. well done, Pete Warburton. Um, this week, we've got a submission from Oscar Astros, who says that, well, his girlfriend um, has been getting into cycling, which is good, and she was riding a, a sort of basic, what he describes as hardware store bike, and she felt like she needed an upgrade. So, uh, he got a Ridley X-Ride, which is a good, good cross bike, yeah. uh, from 2015, but he was, it was, it seemed better days. He was in yeah. a rough state. So, he set about sorting it out. He's re-sprayed it, he's put new decals on it, or decals. Decals. Um, and he's also put a few uh, new components on it as well. 105 shifters. Groups of the people. people. Uh, Diore calipers, and he's gone one by on it. Tiagra cranks and a 40 tooth GRX chain ring. That's nice. A good upgrade. Yeah, a good upgrade. Dig it. So he spent less than 300 pounds. Yeah, and well, for less than three hundred pounds spent, that is a phenomenal. Oh, the colour's bit of cool, isn't it? Upgrading, yeah, I, I do kind of, yeah, I like that colour. That's a that's a nice a nice colour. It's really good. It is a good upgrade. I like the paint finish. I like the I like wheels the as well. Oh yeah, it didn't say they what look like the are. stock wheels that have come with it. Oh, it's done well. That's a, yeah. That is quite Refer an upgrade. Um, but as you say, every single week is not going to be plain sailing. So they're up against Cacterium. Hmm. I'm glad you said the username because I would have no idea how to pronounce that. Um, so they say they got into watching GCN a year ago and have decided to build their own drop bar bike. So the basis of this was their father's trekking bike, which they had about 30 years ago. Drivetrain was done, so it's converted it all to Shimano, a bit of a mix of Shimano micro shift, Sun Race, 1x11, flared drop bars, CX tyres, um, weighs around 12 kilograms, he says. So this is a sort of mountain bike, gravel bike conversion. We get loads of these sent in, don't we? Yeah, that's um, that's that's a cracking looking bike though. Yeah. It's, it's just, oh, I mean that is, yeah, for doing that kind of mixed surface riding. Yeah. That's just, that's just. I do love cracking. seeing these like mountain bike, gravel bike conversions because they're so popular, aren't they? Yeah. We should probably do some. God, we should do our own one. Mm. Imagine how cool that would be. Now have a race. Well, that's an idea. But anyway, um, we need to get a decider on this for next week. Yeah. Um, so head over to the GCN app, click on the link down, click on the link down below to vote even, and um, we'll announce the winner next week. It's now time for the bike vault where you upload pictures of your bikes into the GCN app, and Ollie and I judge them to be either nice or super nice. And if they're super nice, dun dun dun. I ring the bell and commit them to the bike vault for eternity. Yeah, uh, you can play along at home, voting on all the bikes that we feature and submit your own using the GCN app. First up this week, we've got RH Radek. Yes. I think that's his name. Uh, he submitted a Ventum NS1. What do you think of that? It's very American with those wheels on, isn't very it? Very American. Um, yeah. SRAM ready, tap, oversized pulley wheels, big smalls. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to go super nice on that one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Straight in, I super know. nice. Yeah, straight in that. Pirelli tyres nicely lined up. Uh, next up we have Turbinger. Yes, <laughs> with what have they got? He's got a dusty, uh, dusty gravel bike in Focus. Stuttgart. Focus. Parallel. Oh, yes. What do you make of that? Um, crank's not aligned, but it is Biggie Smalls. Um, can't see the valves. I tell you what, in that part of the world, they love piles of wood. Yes. And this picture just shows that. This does confirm that um, that view. <laughs> what you th what you saying? Um, I quite like it. It's quite hard to see some of the some of the bike, but yeah. uh, cranks not aligned, and we we I, like to be picky on I some think things. It's nice. Yeah, it's, it's a, a nice. Bit yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up, nice. we've got ZKN used in forty two. It's the forty second uh, one of those. Yeah, yeah, with a with a with a Voodoo Magic Ten. What do you make of that? Oh, um, I mean, it doesn't have a saddle for nice. starters. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Moving on. Uh, D Alvarez 305 has submitted a Dodge Ram. A Dodge Ram. Well, they clearly want us to know that they have a Dodge Ram pickup truck. Yes. I think that's what we can tell from this photo. Okay. Um, what? Tell us about the Dodge Ram, though. What's the, what's the sort of specs of it? Well, quite impressive pickup truck, to be honest. I mean, mm. they're, they're sort of king of the road. I mean, oh. it's a 6.2 litre supercharged V8 engine, over 700 brake horsepower, punchy as well. I mean, despite it being such a big vehicle, they can. You, know, you can launch a Nord 60 in like four and a half seconds. What sort of Rapid. MPGs can you expect from that? Three. Oh, fantastic. Just, yeah, well, yeah, there you go. Well, 
Dodge okay. Ram pickup trucks. Nice pickup truck if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Up next, yeah. what have we got? We've got a seven Axiom Steel from uh, who's this from? Uh, La Lusic. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I like this. Quite a sort of. It's custom, isn't it? It's it custom is custom because look at the size of the head tube. I'm giving that a super nice for the fact that it's got a nice matching blue speed plate pedal. It's got a nice Campagnolo group set on it and that frame pump. That is incredible, incredible background. It's a it's super a nice. Super nice. Super nice. Fantastic. Um, next up, who have we got? Mechanic Dan, who says steel is real with his D Bernardi SL. D Bernardi? You'd probably know how you say it. Um, anyway, God, that's a cool bike. It is, isn't it? Yes. That is like a it's distinctive. It's very much a sort of retro modern combo, isn't it? I like the way SRAM. that he's combined all sorts of different components on there. He's got SRAM, he's got Suntour, uh, black ink chain ring on there, yeah. all sorts of it's going to look pedals. Oh, yeah, super nice. Super nice. Whoa. That's unfortunate for the bike vault. Why does it end so quick every single week? I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. What a shame. It also means it's the end of the GCN Tech Show. Um, yeah. I guess we'll be back next week. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Let us know in the comments section if you enjoyed the show and um, see you the same time next week. Yeah. Oh, be sure to check out some of our latest documentaries on GCN Plus. We've got some cracking yeah. ones, including a new Game Changers documentary that's dropped. So check it out. <laughs>